All right, this video is going to help us learn how to use Logger Pro's uh, video analysis feature. So we can take a video that has either already been captured or video that we're going to capture in class, and we can analyze it and help us to uh, collect some data that we would like to use. So uh, in order to uh, insert the video, we're going to go to Insert uh, Movie. Uh, again, this can be a video that you have taken or one that we've given you. Um, but you want to uh, locate it on your computer. Uh, in this case, mine's on my desktop, and it's called Conceptual Freefall. Uh, you can see the video displays very nicely here uh, in Logger Pro. Um, just like most video players, you have a uh, play button, a stop button, uh, a rewind to the beginning uh, key, and then these are important. They go frame by frame, okay, and uh, forwards or backwards. You can also slide the video forward or backward as well. Um, there's a lot of features of Logger Pro's video analysis. I just want to show you uh, three things that we can use um, pretty easily uh, in a lot of our labs to help us get real accurate data. Uh, the first one is to figure out the time. Uh, in this example, we're just dropping a soccer ball off the bleachers, and I would like to measure the amount of time it takes for the ball to get right here where it's uh, just leaving the student's hand uh, until it gets all the way down to the ground uh, at the bottom of its trip. So, uh, pretty simple. We want to get uh, go frame by frame until we can get to the point right where the ball is leaving his hands. And so it looks like on the video that would be, if I go back, that would be right about there. This up here is a time uh, marker, and so it is at 3.036. I would write that down as my initial time. I would advance the video to the end of the amount of time I want to measure. You can see the ball is traveling down now. I'm going to go frame by frame to get it right at the bottom of its path. Looks like it's bouncing right there. You can see if I go here, it's starting to bounce back up. So if I keep it right there, right when it hits the ground, my time is uh, 4.170. All I would have to do is subtract my final time and my initial time. That's going to give me the time that it was in the air. So uh, a little bit more accurate than a, a stopwatch with human error. So um, pretty easy to use video to measure time. The next thing that I would like to show you is how to uh, use video to measure distance. This tab down here in the lower right hand corner will open up your uh, video analysis uh, options. If you click that, we have some buttons over here on the side that are um, really helpful. The first thing that I want to do for distance is I need to set my scale. So this sideways ruler uh, allows me to set the scale. Um, if I click it, basically I need to find something in the frame about on the same, pa same plane as our um, object that we're trying to measure uh, that I know the height of. Um, and for this uh, case, I'm just going to use this uh, student right here with the blue shirt on. I'm going to highlight him from his head to uh, the ground. Um, and uh, we measured the student's height actually in class the other day. I can set my scale here, and it's the units in meters, but you can change that if you want. But we measured his height in meters at 1.75 centimeters. I'm sorry, 1.75 meters. So if I set my scale, that, that distance, that green line is 1.75 meters then anything else I measure here with my photo distance uh, will use that scale to give me what I need. So in this case, if I want to measure the distance that the ball fell, I can use my photo distance tab, measure from, so I can get it straight, measure from the um, student's hand to the ground to where the ball is bouncing there, and it tells me just like that, 6.688 meters. Um, so there's my distance. Now you got to be careful. You can't couldn't measure the the height of the door uh, using that same scale because of the perspective issues with the camera. But anything that's in the same uh, plane or same uh, reference point of our uh, initial measurement that we use to set our scale, we can now measure the distance of. All right, and uh, this uh, button would just um, get rid of uh, the scale. Um, if I wanted to get rid of this after I've measured it, it'll, it can just be X'd out 
and we can get a nice uh, clean look here at our uh, video. All right, so that's time and distance. The last one is uh, this button at the top. I'm going to go back to the beginning of my uh, measurement here. This button at the top allows you to add data points. A lot of cool features with this. Here's what I'm going to show you. Um, if you click on the uh, add point uh, button, what it does is you can track the motion of an object. And so I'm going to click on uh, the ball and uh, after I click it, it advances one frame. And I'm going to click it again and it advances another frame and another frame and another frame. And I'm going to keep on going here. And basically what you can see is the fact that the ball's advancing. I'm adding these data points every set um, amount of time. And I'm not going to go too much further here because I don't want to waste our time. But you can visually see, I hope, uh, that the balls are getting... Uh, the data the data points are getting more and more spaced out and that's because the balls traveling a greater and greater distance each frame which is consistent with acceleration and so if we go to our graph here which is um, being made for us right behind our video uh, you can see um, the change in uh, X and the change in Y on our graph and again I'm not going to get into all of this what it means um, and I didn't do as many data points as I could have, but this slope actually represents an acceleration uh, in the uh, x direction. And so, I'm sorry, in the y direction, the vertical direction. And so we can go for that. Now, uh, one common issue that students have is once they get to the graph, they think their video is gone. Well, if you right click on your graph, you can move it to the back and your video will be back. So we have that. And if you want to get rid of these data points, you can click uh, this to uh, get rid of them or bring them back. All right, so uh, three pretty simple things that we can do with Logger Pro. One, to uh, get the time using uh, the time key at the top. Another one, setting your scale and measuring the distances. And then finally, the last one, adding data points to actually graph the motion and get that figured out. I hope this helps, and I hope you're able to get a lot of good data from your uh, videos that you're using throughout the year on Logger Pro.